What does that mean? It means it keeps your flesh hot, literally. You're fleshing out, John. You've heaped treasures together for the last days. That's what James says. What are you doing? Heaping your treasures together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields is kept back by you through fraud. And it crieth out, the cries of them which reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. Oh, yeah. I really did a neat thing. I, I sold that junker and I got top dollar. James is saying, the people that labored for you, you ripped off. You thought you were clever, John. You thought you were a shrewd businessman. You weren't generous. But rather, you figured out ways to manipulate, to squeeze every last penny to your own benefit. And the Lord is saying, guess what? I see and I hear. The people that could have been doing better if you, John, would have been more generous. But you wouldn't be generous. And I hear the cries of the people that could have been doing better if you would have been kinder in the last days in which you're living. Woe to you, rich man, with piles of clothing and lots of stuff and trinkets and toys and baubles and stuff. Woe to you. The Lord says, I hear, I see. It's the last days. Listen to me. You have lived in pleasure on the earth. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to just feast to my heart's desire. The day of slaughter is the idea of I'm just going to feast, man. Butcher this and take that and barbecue the... I mean, <laughs> oh, man. More, more, more for me. The Lord says, what you've done will rise up against you and haunt you eternally. Rather, he says, James declares, be patient, brothers, for the coming of the Lord. Hey, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. Be patient also. Establish your hearts because the coming of the Lord draws nigh. The idea here is simply this. Be as generous as you can be. It's the last days. Oh, it's not that we must say, well, I can't have nice things or good blood. Of course we can. God loves to give his kids good gifts. But you know what? Don't be a hog. It's one thing to say, Lord, you've blessed me and, and you've given me all kinds of neat things. As a father loves to give his children good things, so, Lord, I thank you. It's something else to say, but I've got all this stuff in store. Stored up for me, because I might need it someday. Here's the key, gang. Here's how to beat the Babylon blues. Enjoy things that God sends your way. Use them. But don't love them. Don't hang on to them. Don't collect them. Don't take pride in them. Enjoy them. Use them, but love people. What does that mean? Look for people that you can help out. Look for ways that you can let go. Be as generous as you can be. Doesn't mean you have to live in poverty or be a monk or a hermit. Not at all. Doesn't mean you can't fix up your house or move to a new place or whatever. Uh-uh. But it's a mentality, it's a heart of saying, I realize, why would I want to be hoarding up stuff that just sits in my closet or my overflowing treasure rooms or whatever it might be? Why would I want to do that? 
If there's people that can use this stuff, let them have it, you see. It's a great way to live. If there's anything in your home or in your life, if there's anything that you have that you say, I just can't get rid of that, get rid of that. If there's anything that you have that you say, I just can't live without it, dump it. Because things are to be used. People are to be loved. But if you end up loving things, you'll use people. That's the choice. You either use things and love people, or you love things and you use people. That's the choice that I have to make. And oftentimes I make the wrong one. But the word of God speaks to me. It says, man, watch out, John, for the Babylonian blues. Careful. So I leave you with this. If there's anything that is controlling or intriguing you a thing, give it away. 